and welcome back to Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition History Lesson. As today we're continuing with Cav Weapons and Equipment. It seems like another long-ish one, so get ready. We're gonna be here for a while. Since the first appearance of Cav around 1000 BC, mountain troops have fulfilled many important roles in battle. They acted as scouts, skirmishers, a shock force for melee combat, a rear guard, and the pursuit of a retreating enemy. Cav were divided into several different categories depending on equipment and training, and some categories were better suited for certain roles than others. Like Cav wore little or no armor and was best suited for scouting, skirmishing, and attacking as a rear guard. Acting as a rear guard. Heavy Cav wore armor and were better suited for shock force that charged the enemy. All types of Cav excelled at a pursuit. At pursuit. Knights of the Middle Ages were heavy cav, and the Code of Shiv emphasized their role as shock troops, charging enemy cav and infantry. From the 13th century on, the term man-at-arms was used to describe armored warriors fighting on horse and on foot. The new term applied to knights as well as squires, gentry, and professional soldiers. <clears throat> the advantages of knights in battle were speed, intimidation, power, and height. As the Middle Ages progressed, the equipment of knights improved to enhance these advantages. Weapons. The spear, and later in later the larger lands, was the weapon with which cavalry opened the battle. It was ideal for stabbing opponents on foot, especially those in flight. The presentation of the spear in front of a mounted horseman added greatly to the intimidation caused by an approaching charge. Much of the force of the horse could be transmitted through the spear point at the moment of impact. A charging knight became a thundering missile. Historians disagree on the importance of the stirrup to the rise of the knights. The stirrup first appeared in Asia and reached Europe in the 8th century. Some believe it was critical to the rise of the knights because it allowed the rider to brace itself and his lance thereby transmitting the entire force of the charging horse through the lance point. No one argues with the advantage of this force multiplication, but others suggest that the high saddle developed in the Roman times allowed riders to transmit this power before the stirrup appeared. The Bayeux Tapestry, which depicts William's conquest, England. William's conquest of England in 1066 show the highly regarded Norman knights using their spears mainly as overhand stabbing or throwing spears, not as couched lances. By this time, the stirrup had been known in Europe for at least two centuries. For the remainder of the Middle Ages, the mounted charge by knights holding carriage lances was the epitome of combat for knights. It was not always the correct tactic, however. The initial charge by knights often resulted in the loss of spears or lances, or the charge ended in a general melee. In other case, knights switched to another weapon. This was usually their sword. The calf sword evolved into a saber, a wide, heavy blade that a man standing in stirrups could swing down and tre with tremendous force on the head and upper body of the opponents. Swords were the weapons that knights prized most highly because they could be carried on the person, prominently displayed and personalized. They were the most common weapons for hand-to-hand -hand combat between knights. Good swords were also expensive, so ownership was another distinction of, no of the nobility. Other choices of melee weapons were included, including the Harry Bay evolutions of the club, the axe and flail. Hammers and maces were popular with fighting churchmen and warrior monks trying to obey the letter of the Bible's admonition about shedding blood, which edge weapons were prone to do. Okay. Under no circumstances did knight use missile weapons of any kind. Killing him from that range of an arrow, bolt, or bullet was considered dishonorable. Knights fought worthy foes at the same rank but possible and killed face to face or not at all. Armor Chainmail armor was worn by the late Romans and by some of the invading Germanic tribes including Goths. Chainmail remained popular with the nobility of medieval Europe until more protective plate armor came into use in the 13th century. 
The change was made in part because an arrow or a sharp sword point could pierce chain mail. A cloth tunic called a circo was worn over the chain mail, especially during the crusades to reflect the sun. Helmets also evolved from simple conical designs to large metal buckets to large sculpted pieces designed to deflect arrows. Later, the helmets could be bolted to the armor worn on the body. Full suits of armor weighing up to 60 pounds appeared in the 14th century. Plate armor was well designed and knights retained a surprising amount of agility. An armor knight on the ground was not helpless and could easily stand up. There are accounts and depictions of armored men doing handstands and other gymnast gymnastics in lighter moments. Later suits put increased emphasis on deflecting missiles and reinforced areas most exposed to blows. Elaborate full suits of engraved plate armor appeared late during the age and were more ceremonial and prestigious than practical. Armor was a large expense for a knight who equipped himself and a squire. An important lord had to provide armor for many knights. The making of armor was an important business and a large market and order in used armor developed during the Middle Ages. Common soldiers on the victorious side of a battle could make a substantial sum by stripping dead knights of their armor and selling it. Horses. Knights took special pride in their horses, which were bred for speed and strength. It required extensive training as well to be manageable during charge and melee. Horses were trained to charge with minimal guidance, freeing the knight to hold his shield and lance. Historians disagree as whether the horses of knights were the heavy horse thought necessary to carry the weight of a fully equipped knight, or a smaller horse valued for its speed and agility. Horsemanship was another characteristic by which the elite knights distinguished themselves from the commoners. It was practiced while hunting, a popular leisure activity of the nobles that carries on today in traditional in the traditional fox hunt. Alright, that's the end of this one. I'll be back next time with missile weapons. See you then.